Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from ComputerGarGar.com. In this video, we will have a look at how you can create multiple dependent drop down lists in Excel to assist your data entry. So, drop down lists are great, they provide a very easy way of entering data, but more importantly, it will be accurate data. However, if you have quite large lists, you may wish to break that down and provide multiple kind of lists for selection. But the second, third and fourth list or so on, however many you need, would be dependent on the selection from a previous list. So once we've created a list for list one here, you know the options in list two will be dependent on what somebody has chosen in list one. And then so on, the options in list three will be dependent on what they've chosen this too. Now, on the other sheet of our spreadsheet here, I have already set up some lists as an example. So the first list will be a list of categories, of product, similar to what you would find on Amazon. And then I've got the other lists. So if somebody chooses books, I'll get this drop-down list of romance, travel, and computing. If somebody selected films, they'll get this drop down list of different film genres and so on. They are broken down even further as to if they choose books and then choose romance, they'll get this selection of books. Now, for what we are going to do to work, we need to create a range name for each of these little list groups that has been set up on this sheet or that you would like to use. Now I've taken the time to do a lot of them ahead of this video so that I can just show creating a couple of them to get ourselves going. And you'll notice I've got this romance one selected at the moment, E2 to E4, and in the name box in the top left, it is called romance. And if I select these games cells, it's known as games. So I've just used the same name that I've got in the header there for simplicity. I can name it whatever I want, but I've used the same name as header. Now what is important, absolutely vital important for what we are about to do, is that the name we give to the range has to exactly match the option in the previous list. So in this category list, the option is called games, and the name of the range is games. So that has to be bang on the same. I can't have the category saying computer games and then the range name called games. It has to be bang on the same as they will be matched up for these dependent lists to work. Okay, so let's have a look at creating a range name in case this is new to anybody uh, watching this video. So for this category list, I will select the ranges A2 to A4 and all we need to do is simply click in this name box in the top left here and type in what we would like to call it so I'll call it category and press enter on the keyboard to confirm and I'll need to do the same here for this books one and as I just mentioned we will need to name that books I need to match what it is called in the category here so I'll highlight the range of cells with book items in click in the name box type books and press enter to confirm. So now every range, every list here has a range name assigned to it. And we can see these both in this little drop down list for that name box. And I can also see them on the formulas tab and the name manager button where I can use this to manage these range names should I need to at a later date if I wish to change their name or maybe even change their range. But I'll close that for now and the range names are done. The next step is to create the lists. So I'm going to go to my data entry sheet and highlight the cells. I would like to create the initial first listing. Now you can select whatever range you wish. I'm going to select down to row 10 just so it's nice and visual and we can see what I'm applying the list to. You may wish to apply it to a column or just one cell 
or whatever it is dependent on what you're doing. Now I'm going for the data tab and the data validation button across that data tab so that I can create a list from here. And this first list will be nice and simple. It's because it's the first one, it's just a standard list and I'm going to reference the range name that I used on that other sheet. So the first list is for categories. So I will type equals category. That is the range name I gave it. I'll have to retype that, I've typed it wrong. Here we go, equals category. And I'll click OK. So that first list is done. All the options in that category list, of which are only three, these are quite small lists, and now in order cells from A2 to A10. Okay, now the next list will be that little bit more awkward. Uh, so next, select B2 down to B10 for the second list. Back to data validation and to create a list. But this time we will be using a function called indirect. So let me close that box for a moment. We will be using this function, indirect. A function that returns a reference specified by a text string. So when somebody makes their first selection in the list, the second list will look at what they chose, see it chose films, and look for something in Excel also called films, uh, and which they'll show they'll find the range name when they have that look. And we need this indirect function to convert that literal piece of text in A2 to an object. A living entity of Excel is there a films thing and somebody puts the text films. <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense uh, if this is new to you. We need this indirect function to convert that piece of text to a reference. Okay, let me highlight that range again. Data validation. Choose a list. And it will be equals indirect opening bracket and we'll need to reference the cell of the previous entry which will be cell A2 the first cell of the previous list and I will need to take that dollar sign out of before the two because I don't want to reference just A2 you need to look down that column at the other cells of the selection. I can leave the dollar sign within the A, take it out, leave it in, it's irrelevant that one, but I might as well leave that there. Dollar sign A2, closing bracket, indirect on A2. If I click OK, you may get an error message at that point at times. If you do, just click OK or yes or whatever the message is I would have probably received one if I didn't have films in that list already so don't be put off if you see one it, just have a, have a message saying oh this might result in an error you just say yeah 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 <laughs> no worries because it's dependent on the previous list uh, depending on the setup of that it might believe you're going to get an error okay so hopefully now if I look at this I have a selection of films and if I change that first entry to books, list two will have a list of books. So we can see that's working. It's dependent on what somebody chooses in the previous list. Choose games, and we know what's coming here. Okay, now we see our job here is to look at multiple dependent drop down lists. That's what I said on this video. So let's get list three in. Same thing here C2 to C10. Data validation list and it will be equals indirect opening bracket B2. That is the previous entry now, B2. Take that dollar sign out from before the two, close in bracket and OK. That's the error message I was talking about. Source currently evaluates to an error. Do I want to continue? Yes, I do. So only because that is blank. Notice how I can't choose an option in list three at the moment because the previous one is blank. As soon as I put something in there, like animation, 
list three kicks into life and will display some animated films so we now have three lists list two and list three dependent on the selection in the previous list so that is how we create multiple dependent drop down lists in excel a really really useful feature to do large lists of products that sort of stuff and you want to try and ensure data accuracy and easy data entry as well I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful please check out some of the other tips and tricks at computergargart.com